Hi, this is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. If your doctor is still pushing the DASH diet on you, it's time to tell your doctor to get caught up on his reading or get yourself a new doctor. And I'm dead on serious about this. The Journal of the Annals of American Family Medicine just released a study that compared a very low carb diet versus the DASH diet. The DASH diet is called the Dietary Approach to Stopping Hypertension. This is the one that the American Heart Association and U.S. News and World Report have been touting as the best diet out there ever. It is designed to lower your sodium intake. It is a low saturated fat, high carb diet that everybody says reduces your blood pressure. But really does it? I mean, it's a very bland diet, high in vegetable oils, skim milk, uh, boneless, skinless chicken breast and tilapia and other stuff but you get to eat vegetables and you get to eat lots of grains so that's the dash diet in a nutshell along with the fact that it you know you reduce sodium so you get a bland high carb diet compare that to the very low carb diet which is red meat and salt you know cheese heavy creams anything you jolly well please except you're going to reduce your carb intake to less than 40 grams a day. So basically it was a keto versus dash head-to-head -head comparison. Over 100 people participated in the study. They were all typical Americans, overweight to obese, hypertension, high blood glucose levels. And that's what they checked. Okay, how much would this reduce blood pressure? How much would it reduce their weight? And how much would it reduce their blood glucose level and keto kicked dash's butt i mean it wasn't even close twice as much of a drop in blood pressure that was the thing that really surprised me it was that big of a difference the average person on dash diet you know for all everything that they keep saying that this reduces blood pressure you notice whenever they tout, if you go to their website and you say, wow, does a DASH diet work? They will talk about it will reduce your risk of heart attacks and strokes by 21% or something to that effect. doesn't talk much about how much it will actually reduce your blood pressure. Because in this study, it, people that were on the DASH diet only reduced their blood pressure about five points. It reduced over 10 on the keto diet. And this is just in a matter of weeks. This is pretty impressive stuff. I mean, the drop in blood glucose, the drop in weight was just twice as good on keto as it was with the top touted diet of all time, the NASH diet. And what's really cool about this, neither one of these diets cost you anything. But it is maybe one of the better indications that I've seen yet that keto is the best approach for healthy weight loss for and getting you healthy i mean you want to reduce your chances of dying of a heart attack or stroke then keto's the way though i doubt u.s news and world report and american heart association are going to be out there anytime soon saying that boy if you really want to sit, stay healthy and get healthy and lose weight and reduce your blood pressure go keto because they just cannot bring themselves to say that saturated fat is bad now since the dash diet's been out there's been this war on salt constantly you know you've been hearing for years that if you want to reduce your blood pressure you need to reduce your salt and frankly that's been tested now several different times there's been different meta-analysis and meta-analysis studies are considered the gold standard for any type of medical study because it compares several studies and looks at them to see if there's any evidence for reducing salt, does it reduce blood pressure? And every time they do a meta-analysis on all the studies on salt, it shows that salt does nothing. It doesn't change it. I mean, it's probably theoretically possible if you eat a really high salt or a really low salt diet, that that's gonna affect your, uh, your blood pressure. But frankly, if you're just having, if you're salting the taste, it doesn't change it at all. And I found that fascinating because I expected um, back about five years ago when I quit drinking, my blood pressure went through the roof. 
And that's to be expected. I mean, I was an alcoholic and drinking way too much before that happened. And so I'm coming off of it. And during that time of transition, you expect the body when it's healing to have big waves and that was one of them so it was dangerously high and it needed to come down and my family was very insistent that I go see a cardiologist so I went over and saw him we got on blood pressure medicine to reduce it got it down to a normal level and chemically kept it low until the withdrawals were done but um, what was interesting to me the whole time I was meeting with a cardiologist not once did he mention reducing salt I found that absolutely fascinating. And I was kind of expecting to get a lecture on, you gotta reduce your salt intake. Never mentioned it. He was up on his research. He knew the reading. Salt had nothing to do with blood pressure. Never get, told me to cut it out. Now, we were just concerned about getting the medication to make sure that my blood pressure normalized. What this may mean to you though, if you do go low carb, you may have a major reduction in your blood pressure. And if you're on blood pressure medicine, you need to be monitoring it because you need to very quickly talk to your doc to get you off of blood pressure medicine. Look, if you're taking blood pressure medicine and you're getting too much of it and your blood pressure is dropping because of your diet, you're at very high risk of falling. There's, and your athletic performance is going to fail. And there's lots of other problems with very low blood pressure. You don't want it. So the question is, how do you know if your blood pressure is low or high. And this is frankly one of the great frustrations that I have with most people in medicine. They don't take your blood pressure right. Every study, the way the American Heart Association tells you to take your blood pressure to get an accurate reading is you sit in a quiet, darkened room for about five minutes and you don't talk. And you have your feet firmly planted on the floor and you're sitting in a straight back chair. That's how you're, and then you take your blood pressure. That's how you're supposed to do it in order to get an accurate reading. How does it happen when you go to the doctor? Well, let's see, you fight through traffic to get to the doctor's office. You have an argument with the person at the front desk over your insurance card. You sit in the waiting room for up to 30 minutes because the doctor's behind. And about that point, your blood pressure is starting to go up because you're getting aggravated and you're worried about making your next appointment. Then they hustle you back to the back and they check your weight and they tell you it's too high then they check your pulse your feet are probably dangling off the exam table you're probably nervous because you're going to see your doctor because you're concerned about something so you've got some additional stress then they tell you take your blood pressure and go oh my gosh your blood pressure is too high well they took it wrong that can mean up to 20 extra points on your blood pressure so take it at home and monitor it on a regular basis. It only costs about 30 bucks to get a blood pressure cuff and don't get one of those wrist things. Get one that actually goes on your arm and spend a couple extra bucks so it sends the data to your phone. That way you've got a good record and you don't have to rely on your memory and you don't have to write down all these measurements. You know, it's all saved for you in the computer and you can take a look at it. You can show your doc next time you see him. It's like, look, here's my blood pressure when I do it at home, when I do it right. And if it's going down, dropping down no, below normal, you probably need to see your doc about adjusting your blood pressure medicine ASAP. Because low blood pressure being controlled, and I know, I mean, I saw it happening with myself when my body detoxified, when you know I was becoming normal after drinking heavily for years and getting healthy and was eating a really good diet and exercising, my blood pressure started dropping pretty rapidly. And when that happened and I was on the medication, I was getting lightheaded. My exercise performance was dropping. I noticed that problem and I had to, you know, we reduced my blood pressure medicine of lucinopril from 30 milligrams down to five milligrams and eventually got off of it because my blood pressure is now normal. So monitor it, please, as carefully as you can so you get some real data to go talk to your doctor about. And, you know, and be, they're not quite sure that why you're always high when you're in his doctor's office. Remind them you're doing it wrong. Unless you want to put me in a quiet room for five minutes by myself, not talking in a high back chair with my feet on the floor, uh, you're going to have to go at the home measurements. That to me makes the most sense of all. By the way, 
If you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, would you do me a favor and hit it now? It's the only way we can get this message. If you think that this type of message needs to be heard by more people, would you please do that just real fast? Because that tells the algorithm that what is being said on this channel is valuable and helpful and might be helpful to other people. And that way we can spread the message to even more folks. So it doesn't cost you anything, but it sure helps get this word out to more people. So if you agree, you know, if you, if you're kind of excited about it, I am about keto diet, kicking Dash's diet's butt, and you don't have to live eating bland anymore, and you can eat a really good keto diet, hit the like subscribe button. This is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. We try to put out a new message every single day, or at least every weekday, and I will talk to you tomorrow.